Hi, this is a continuation of the previous lecture on World War II. We're going to jump into the Mediterranean and go to North Africa at this point, where we meet German General Erwin Rommel. He's known as the Desert Fox uh, for his abilities in terms of crafting battle plans and tactics on the run. Very sly like a fox, you know, you get it. Um, there's question as to, like, kind of, have, as we've gotten further and further from here, as to whether he's a real Nazi or not. Um, he doesn't really come out with anything specifically ideological like most of the Nazi leaders will. Um, and he's actually named as part of an assassination plot against Adolf Hitler. Um, when his name is thrown in there, um, he is actually uh, given the choice by Hitler himself to either commit suicide or to go on trial. And he chooses to commit suicide and they make it look like he was killed by Allied troops. Um, but regardless, at the Battle of El Alamein, Erwin Rommel is leading the German forces against Bernard Law Montgomery, the guy on the right over here. Um, he is the British commander. He's known as Monty, colloquially. Um, and this is really the turning point in North Africa. This is the first time that Britain will beat Germany in any battle in World War II. Uh, first time that that happens. And so if you look, El Alamein is down here um, in uh, North Egypt, right along the Mediterranean. So again, control of the Mediterranean becomes an important point for many of these men. Final chess moves to kind of bring us to the end of the war here. The Soviets are pushing Germany back out of the USSR. We have the Battle of Kursk, which is the largest uh, tank battle in the war. And by 1944, that's 1943, by 1944, uh, Germany is completely put out of the USSR as a result of those turning points like Stalingrad that we spoke about earlier. Uh, Italy, we see the invasion starting in Sicily of the Allies, including the Americans uh, coming up through Sicily. Mussolini actually has to be evacuated. He's being held as a prisoner. Uh, and a couple of Germans, I think six Germans, liberate him from that prison. And eventually he is captured. Um, uh, his death in terms of how he dies. Uh, he's captured, he's shot, and then he is hung from meat hooks at a gas station uh, where people come and throw shoes and things like that at him. Uh, June 6, 1944 is D-Day. That's part of Operation Overlord. That's the big um, invasion of the European continent from Great Britain. You can see that diagrammed here. This area here is Normandy. Um, the forces are meeting at a variety of beaches, and I'll show you that in the next clip. Um, I recommend the book, The Longest Day by Cornelius Ryan, an incredible account of that first day of the invasion forces. Originally, Calais over here, you can see the distance is much closer, uh, was believed to be the point at which the Allies would attempt to um, come back into the European continent and, and invade. Um, and so it takes a while, it takes about really 48 hours for Hitler to make the decision and make the call. Uh, that, okay, this is actually the main invasion force down in Normandy. It is not a diversionary force trying to set up an invasion for Calais. Uh, for a few hours, he is completely unreachable. The fury is not to be disturbed. And so uh, a lot of confusion going on in the German ranks, and that uh, is going to lead to the inability of the Germans to push back against this invasion. It is very hard. It is very bloody. It's the beginning scene in Saving Private Ryan. Um, and that's uh, kind of really the beginning of the Allies beginning to push Germany back in Europe. So that's a little bit about uh, D-Day, um, that kind of first day of the invasion. Um, in the Pacific, the final moves, uh, the strategy is called island hopping, where the United States is clearing the Japanese from individual islands, making their way, getting closer and closer to the main islands of Japan. Um, in Back in the uh, Western theater in Europe, we have what's called the race to Berlin. Basically, that's the Allies on one side and the Soviets on the other, basically kind of seeing who's the first to get to Berlin itself and take it over. Um, eventually, so that there's no conflict, the, U the Allies agree to move towards the south into closer to Bavaria, while the Soviets take the north into Berlin. May 8th, 1945, uh, that is VE Day, that's Victory in Europe Day, and then celebrated on August 14th and 15th, um, and then alternately, officially, September 2nd is VJ Day. That's victory in Japan. Uh, Allied forces, especially the United States, victory there. Um, that's after dropping the two bombs on, Nag on Hiroshima and Nagasaki um, that, they, the, that Japan eventually surrenders. Um, we'll get into the conferences that kind of lead to the dropping of those bombs and how each of the Allies looked at and responded to that news. This is a version of the Atlantic Seawall. This is what Germany built in an effort to try and uh, keep any invasion from happening. You can see that they're made so that even at high tide or low tide that the ships can't get very close and will become sitting ducks in the water. Uh, here are some other images. Top left here, uh, you see some soldiers having to get over the barbed wire that was placed on the beaches at Normandy. 
um, top right is um, no, after the initial Normandy landings, we see the supplying of those lines after those beachheads had been established by Allied forces. Uh, bottom left, this is actually at Calais. You can see again um, the different uh, items that would be placed in an effort to try and keep the Allies from landing there. And then bottom right, you see where the Normandy landings took place, so the various names of beaches. Uh, first and fourth divisions of the U.S., Utah and Omaha Beach, um, Gold, Juno, and Sword Beaches for Canadian and British forces there. Those are just kind of names that pop up. If you've ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, yes, the D-Day invasion, that first landing, that first scene, um, or second scene, I guess, is um, pretty accurate in terms of what it was like, the feelings generated by that landing. Uh, as forces get closer and closer to Berlin, Hitler, for about a month or so, boards himself up in his bunker beneath Berlin. And then on um, April 30th, 1945, Hitler commits suicide with his um, girlfriend slash new wife, Ava Braun, uh, and his dog over here, uh, Blondie, kind of similar to a German Shepherd. Um, they test out the cyanide pills that they're going to be taking on Blondie first, so Blondie actually dies first, uh, and then later on, Forces find uh, Hitler and Eva Braun in there. Hitler, after taking the cyanide pill, wants to make extra sure that he cannot be captured and shoots himself through the head. Um, he says with some of his last words, above all, I charge the leaders of the nation and those under them to scrupulous observance of the laws of race and to merciless opposition to the universal poisoner of all people's international jewelry. So even to the end, he's super ideological. He's looking at this not as a military exercise or military problems, um, but as ideological problems. Then we see those big three conferences. Initially, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin, um, first at Tehran. Uh, this is where they discuss opening up the Second Front, believing that that will open up the Eastern Front and help out the Soviets. That's where we are seeing more concrete plans put into place for Operation Overlord and D-Day. Uh, then at Yalta, this is uh, towards the very end of the war here. We're looking at post-war peace, self-determination for the countries. There's some discussion about that. The Soviets want kind of more control. They want basically a buffer zone, um, but it's going to turn out that they more care about kind of controlling them. Um, the occupation zones, including Berlin, including Germany, start to be hammered out here. Uh, and at Yalta, um, the agreement is made that the USSR will be able to take the islands and lands that were taken from them in the Russo-Japanese War in 1904 that Russia lost. Then finally in Potsdam, uh, in Germany, um, this is Truman overtaking for um, FDR, who has since passed away, uh, July 1945. Um, again, those zones are hammered out. The land that is gained and Japan is coming up again. The effects of this, they're not united. While they are united initially in terms of wanting unconditional surrender, they don't, there's a lot of tension there. And a lot of that tension speaks to the ideological differences between the Western countries and capitalist countries versus the communist country of the Soviet Union. And those things are going to be exacerbated. There's a real concern that the Soviet Union is then going to try and take over those countries that they march through to push Germany back, um, that they're looking to expand their individual empire. So those tensions are going to last. Uh, and so these are just some memes that I found that kind of made me chuckle. Um, well done. People are funny. People are creative. Um, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. And I hope you all have a great and wonderful day.